All right, we, are we ready to get into the Word this morning? Father, we thank you for your Word, which always speaks. And God, we just pray for the voice of the Word to speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that your Word always speaks in Jesus' name. I just paraphrase Psalm 103.20. I love that. The Bible, all 31,000-plus verses are not just information. They're revelation. And God wants us to hear from the Word, just like Lynn reminded us. And, you know, we don't have telegrams so much anymore, right? I mean, telegrams, when I was growing up, man, you got a telegram. That was a big deal. You know, we don't have telegrams as much. But let me tell you, kind of a spiritual telegram that's alive and well now. And when you open up the Bible and you're, you're concerned about something, you're struggling about something, Lord, do I do this or I do that? And there's just options and I'm not sure what my wisdom is about this situation. And you open up the Bible and bam, God just gave you a telegram of knowing wisdom that we know what to do in a situation. I am extremely grateful for God's Word. And today we want to continue to hear your voice because you speak. Amen? Father, we just come as learners. We want to be able to hear the gentle nudges of your Holy Spirit. When that you're telling us, Knox, do it differently. Lord, help us say, God, thank you for loving me enough to say, You'd rather me do it some other way. God, when you're giving us insight into things that we struggle with, we had no idea, and, you, and we just, we, the answer all become like a billboard. Oh, that's what it is. But God, it all becomes because out of your word, out of the treasury of knowing you, God, we can hear your voice. And we are extremely grateful. Teach us to hear your voice closer, keener than ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, and, Andre, I'm not sure what we've... I may need your help to advance this. Anyway, and so far, we've talked about three ways to hear, and these go in a very strategic order. God, God wants us to hear His voice ourselves. How many of us can remember the first time the Lord spoke to us and go, wow, that is different than anything I've ever had happen in my life before. God spoke to me inside my heart. That's... And so we want to be people who hear, hear from God personally. We've also touched base briefly about the gift of prophecy, which is talked about in 1 Corinthians 12. And we're going to spend a few moments talking about prophets uh, and wrap up some thoughts on that and share some other thoughts, Lord willing, to kind of uh, uh, come to a stopping point on these thoughts. But uh, I love the Word of God. It's active and living, just kind of like bread. You know, that word in, in Hebrew, active and living, is like yeast. It's so fun when the yeast rises and you come back later and you go, wow, it's bigger. You know, I, I don't do a whole lot of baking bread, but I guess sometimes you can have, well, it's rising. I mean, Tammy and others, the ladies that know about how that happens a lot more than I would. But sometimes that yeast just keeps rising. Isn't that a wonderful way to deal with God's Word? Let, Lord, let the yeast keep rising. So, and Andre, I'm not sure what the, if you could just advance for me. Uh, but uh, anyway, just to review step one, here's just one kind of hallmark verse about how we need, God wants us, we're designed by God to hear from Him. You know, when we see Adam and Eve in the garden, what is He doing? He is talking with them. <laughs> that is the way we are designed, is to be able to hear God's voice. Does it mean we're perfect all the time? Does it mean I want to wake up tomorrow morning and ask God to give me a word about whether I should brush my teeth and go to work? No. But God wants to speak to us and give us things that we possibly couldn't know outside of His kind, tender, loving kindness that gives us guidance and direction, encouragement uh, that we couldn't get on our own. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And we pray that as we hear God's voice, that help us follow Him better. That's the purpose for us hearing His voice, is that we can follow Him better than ever. It's not so we can go out and do our own thing. God, we want to learn Your voice more deeper than ever so we can follow You closer, easier than ever. I, I love Psalms 32, which says, don't be like a horse that you've got to jerk around with a bridle. Let me whisper, and we go, oh, God wants me to go this way. God desires that for each one of us. So that was step one. Uh, please, sir. Uh, step two is the gift of prophecy. And 
uh, I, I love this because it, we, we know just just for her, just for uh, going back over briefly, we know that the gifts of the Spirit and talked about in First Corinthians 12 are given as the Holy Spirit chooses. We can rest in that, right? He chooses. But there's also kind of a hint here in First Corinthians 14, pursue love. And that's much more important than spiritual gifts, right? If we're going to go after, if we're as a church, as believers, if we're going to have love or spiritual gifts, you know what we need? We need God's love. But pursue love, but also God opens up the door. If we're living in love for him and love for other people, God has gifts that, according to Romans chapter 1, are designed to strengthen the body of Christ. And we're told about these gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 and other places. But I love the, the invitation that, that's given here from heaven about the gift of prophecy. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. I believe it's New King James says, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy, there seems to be some sort of implication that if we want to have this gift move in our life, the Lord may give that to us. And if, by the way, it, and this is, this is for people of just a real desire. When we close today, we're going to say, if, if there's an earnest desire in our heart to be used in this gift, Lord, just hear that and just give us perhaps the first, the first word we've ever had or teach us, take us the next step in this. I remember the first time I ever had a prophetic word from the Lord. It wasn't like a 10-page long tome like the book of Isaiah, you know. You read Isaiah and it may say, and the word of the Lord came to Isaiah in the second year of King so-and-so, and you start quotation marks, and then 12, 12 pages later, you get the end of the quotation marks. God's probably not going to do that with you and me. He'll probably do something like he did with me the first time I heard from God. The Lord gave me a simple phrase, I am the good shepherd. God takes us where we are. That was a verbatim quote from Scripture. And we go, oh, wow. The Holy Spirit spoke that to me. I can speak that out loud. The Lord is saying that he is the good shepherd. And so I thank God for his gifts. And we also talked, uh, Andre, please, thank you. Uh, by the way, and we just reminded ourselves that here's the purpose of, of uh, prophecy. It's not to tell somebody else how to live their life. It's to do these three things. It's to bring edification, to build them up, and to bring them in exhortation and comfort. How many of us know there's a million, millions of people who just need God's comfort, God's encouragement? You're going to make it. We're going to make it in these crazy times we've lived in. Here's a tool that God has given us that not only can we stay encouraged, but that we can bring encouragement to other people to say, I know you're going through a rough time. And I've been through something similar to that before. God's going to get you through that. And I believe the Lord is speaking to me that just as he did that, I believe he's going to do it with you too. God is looking for people who will be encouragers and building up, building up other people. Amen? And so that is, that is one of the pivotal summaries Thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much. Of what the purpose of the prophetic gift is. It's to be an encourager and build up other people. Now, here's another thing that the prophecy does. It helps us fight a good fight. Are we in a war, boys and girls, friends and neighbors? We are in a war. We are in a spiritual war like we've never seen in our lifetime. How many of us would like to have something we can hear from God and be better prepared to be in the war that we're in? And we believe that our Lord Jesus Christ, it triumphs and everything. None of this that we're seeing in our culture, in our schools, in our businesses, and in countries, none of this takes God by surprise. But we can't ignore the fact that this is a real challenge that we are facing in this world starting about two years ago. It was like an avalanche of craziness started happening. Is God up to the task of equipping, of taking care of this and equipping his, his saints to be full of power and love and goodness in such a time of this? And the answer is absolutely yes. Here we are. And he is uh, enabling us to be able to fight the good warfare according to what? The prophecies made concerning you. How many of us have, the, have had prophetic words just spoken over our life? Where God just speaks to us. You know, I've, I've had one is, you know, when we came into this church as baby believers and we had never heard of prophecy. We had, we had never heard of all kind of things, you know. Uh, when we came into this, into this uh, uh, Christian life, 
And Grady, who is our founding pastor and has gone on to be with the Lord, he had a, a word for us just very early on. And, you know, I won't share it because it's not, that's not really the point here. But I bet I've gone back to that word hundreds, if not thousands of times. Say, Lord, this makes me strong. This word that was given over my life to exhort me, to encourage me, to give me comfort, to be able to triumph in every battle, I have used that to be able to fight the good fight hundreds of times. So God's word only works 100% of the time. Amen? Because it empowers us to be able to overcome and triumph in him in this life. So I'm grateful for and... uh, Because God wants us to be warriors. Amen? Amen? Andre, if you could go to the the, the next one. I think I'll share this story for another time. But here's a, if you can go to the next one, please. Say, Andre, if you could go ahead and flip to the next one, please. Okay, so we're going to pick up our, our, our thought about prophets. And you go, oh, okay, prophets. I thought that was just Old Testament stuff. You know, there's Jeremiah and Isaiah and all those guys are gone by centuries. Well, what does the Bible say? You know, that is a rhetorical question that Grady Barton asked a thousand times. Yeah, he asked, a, you know, somebody asked a question. He'd say, well, how many of us know that sometimes Jesus answered a question with a question? Okay, well, we probably heard Grady say many, many times somebody asked a question. He'd say, well, what does the Bible say? It's a very good source, right? A very good place to start. So, uh, Lynn, if you could go to the next one. And we see that, oops. Now, this is, let me ask you a question. Is Ephesians in the New Testament? I had somebody a while back ask me if 2 Colossians was in the Old Testament or the New Testament. So, didn't, but Ephesians is in the New Testament, Okay. And we, we thank God for pastors, for, for teachers, for evangelists. We're very familiar and comfortable with that's part of how God's word, God's body operates. But that's not the end of the list. There's two other types of people on the list, and they are prophets and apostles. Okay? Is that Bible? Is that, is that in your Bible? So, by the way, in the years that I've been pastor, I think this is the first time that I've ever spoken on the biblical office of prophet. It's not something we want to focus on. But is it part of the body of Christ? The answer is yes. We need to know about this because it is part of how God operates in this day and time. Okay? And so he gave some prophets. Now, that, that phrase, some prophets, seems to imply that not anybody can be a prophet. And who does the choosing here? He, he does. There's a few of them, and he will leave that with him to decide, okay? Let me just say categorically that I'm not one of those, okay? But I believe it is a a biblical place and that God has some prophets in in this day. Let's go to the next one, please. Now, remember how we looked at in 1 Corinthians 12 that the word, the, the Greek word for prophecy and the gift of prophecy meant exhortation encouragement and comfort well the word here for biblical prophets for the office of a prophet in ephesians chapter 4 is a very very different word it means somebody uh, it's from a greek word means uh in front of and to make known to make known something in front of what is happening you know there's many many times in in the bible we can see that god spoke into the future he exists outside of time and we see Hundreds of times where his book tells us of things to come, okay? And there's people we believe that that hear from God. Are they perfect? No. But they have a reliable, credible voice to be able to hear from what the Lord might be speaking into our day. And this is a foretelling aspect of what God still has uh, in the body of Christ now. If you could go to the, the next one. And, by the way, we're familiar with this, Amos chapter 3, 7, that the Lord does nothing, but that he does not share it with his servants, the prophets. You think, well, that's Old Testament stuff. That's Jeremiah stuff, and that's, man, that's... Well, let's take a look at another corresponding verse, which refers to something that hasn't happened yet, and you'll find it remarkably similar 
out of the book of Revelation. This talks about something that, of course, hasn't happened yet. And it says, talks about the day of the seventh angel. Now, do I know everything about the seventh angel? No, but I know it's true because God says there's a seventh angel who's going to do something in the days uh, uh, in front of us. It could be years ahead of us or centuries. That's, a, that's in God's hands. But that the mystery of God would be finished as he declared through who? His servants, the prophets. So we see prophets were in the Old Testament, and according to the book of Revelation, they are still speaking. And I'm grateful. How many of us want to have the full, everything that God has to equip the body of Christ today? We want it all. And so God, teach us to be able to embrace all that you have. Andre, if you could go to the, uh, the next one. I apologize that technology is messing up this morning. Now, so there is a foretelling aspect of, of this prophets who speak uh, today. But there's also what we call a foretelling. And I love this because I believe this is very, very important for where we are right now. And that is being able to give us the assurance God is in the middle of where we are right now and we will see God's triumph in our day. I believe we're going to see millions of people brought into the kingdom of God. I believe we're going to see some of the most onerous bad actors that are out there come to know Jesus Christ. And I pray that in your prayers, that as you think through there's a whole list of people that we can say, they're destroying everything that generations have been raising in this country. And you could bring probably a dozen or two names up. I pray we should pray for their salvation. We should pray for them to come to know Jesus. Now, am, are we speaking some kind of universal salvation? No. They have to say, Lord, I, I have been doing terrible things against you. But I repent and I receive Jesus as my Savior. And we pray that there are many of those who do that. But we need, how many of us know we need a voice today that can assure us and just let us know we hear from God personally. We, the Lord may give us a, a prophetic word to share with somebody and there's a handful of prophets who are also embracing who God is and saying, it's going to be okay. We're going to make it through this and God will triumph in everything we're seeing. As a matter of fact, when we look back, we'll go, this is amazing. God planned it this way all along to see Many, many people brought into the kingdom of God. How many of us would like to be part of seeing many people be part of the kingdom of God? That's what God is preparing us for. That's why we're emphasizing these various ways that God wants to speak to the body of Christ to strengthen us for such a time as ahora, now, okay? Now, here's a familiar one out of Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe in the Lord your God. Can we say that phrase together? Believe in the Lord your God. And you shall be established. We believe in God. We're going to be established. We're going to stand on the rock. We're going to be firm. We can, do, we can go through anything because God is with us. And you remember in this account, this is where three armies, not just one, but three armies came against Jehoshaphat. He called for fast. He said, let's bring a prophet. The prophet came out and said, stand still and see the salvation of God. You need not fight in this battle. We're going to go out and worship. You talk about a counterintuitive battle plan. We're going to go out and worship the Lord of holiness and see what he does. And, and part of the things that we can learn from this is this lesson says, believe the prophets and you shall prosper. Now that prosper there has nothing to do with dinero. It has to do literally to being able to push forward or break out in the Lord. How many of us want to be able to push forward and break out in the Lord? How many of us feel like we're kind of up against a wall that there's just resistance against almost everything god is preparing us to break out and to push forward and one of the ways he's going to do it is by speaking encouragement to us personally number two he may give us you he may have a word of i was encouraged by the word that lynn had this morning about how the lord spoke to him god wants to use this in just a very non-weird you know constructive powerful way he says I believe the Lord is just telling me that I, he, he was speaking to me. I was just mowing my lawn yesterday and he was telling me about how he's going to enable me to hear clearly. You go, oh, I want more of that. I'll take that. I'm glad he spoke to you. I'll take that encouragement. Lord, I want to hear from you clear. 
And also, I believe there's credible voices out there who are a handful of prophets that God is speaking into the, where we are right now who are foretelling, saying, it's going to be okay, and God will triumph. And, you know, over the, over the last couple of years, Kay and I are probably listening to more of these people. We probably listen to more people who we believe are credible prophets in the last two years than maybe the last 40 years combined. Because we believe that there's a prophetic voice in this area that God is raising up. Does that mean we take for... Uh, for granted everything every verbatim everything you say no but there is a consensus you know what's saying god is with us and he will triumph and he's going to use people just like you and i to be part of a great breakthrough to see many people brought up the kingdom of god so i'll take all that encouragement i can and there is a there is one of these people if you could go to the next next slide How many of us recognize this guy? Okay, this, this is a guy named Dutch Sheets, who we feel like has been a very, very credible kind of intercessory prophet for years. For about 30 years, he actually he went to Christ for the Nations. Uh, many of us have probably seen his give him 15 encouragements that he gives uh, about, you know, speaking into the mess that we're in, but also God's triumphing through the mess. And... Uh, I want us to listen to uh, just about a two-minute clip because, in my opinion, and my opinion is not perfect, this is a credible prophet speaking in to speaking encouragement to the body of Christ right now, okay? And one of the main words that, that he has is America shall be saved. Let me just put some fences on that. Does that mean he's saying that the, God wants to save the political institutions no, that's not what it's about at all. It's about the biblical legacy of men and women who came over from Europe. He said, we are willing to risk our lives to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God wants to save. Even if in our lifetime, we've let a lot of that slip away. So just to put that context, and I would encourage you, the reason I put this, uh, that whole title on there, this is the... Uh, uh, the there's there's a source of videos that if you want to look at it's, this this is the title and a well known source of videos Dutch sheets amazing God's heart for America and the world this let me just summarize uh, part of this that this he back in the early nineties he was he was walked up he was about to start his Wednesday night prayer meeting and he couldn't he couldn't move on he, he just God just kind of arrested him in a way. And he just wasn't quite sure what the Lord was doing. And his wife recognizes God's doing something. And he says, let's just, we're just going to leave Dutch. We're going to let the Lord just do whatever he's doing with the Lord. And let's just, they didn't, they didn't complete their, their meeting. He says, we're just going to pray for Dutch. And Dutch said he was, for about three hours, he just began weeping with the Lord. He said he began weeping, the Lord, almost to the point of like his heart breaking. And he felt like what he was sensing is God's pain at seeing America drifting away from his plan, but how God had a plan to restore. Amen. Amen. And it's about a 16-minute clip of his experience with that and also some declarations he makes as a result of that. So you may want to watch the full 16 minutes, but I'd like us to watch two minutes of this, but I just wanted to place some context here. They can, they can, they can scream about nationalism, Christian nationalism, me all they want. I'm not moved by what they say, because I know the love in my heart for America is not a pride. It's not a we're better than someone else. It's not we want more than anyone else. The love I have for this nation was put there by God. And here's what he said to me. For what I'm going to do in this hour in the nations of the earth, the harvest that I am going to reap, I must have this nation. And you're going to help me get her back. That's what he said to me. Yes. How many of us want to be part of seeing God restore his legacy in this nation? We're in, Lord. 
the stakes are not just about us prospering in America. So we know that. We're, this is not a selfish thing. For, this is not just so that my grandkids can enjoy what I've enjoyed. I learned a long time ago about the American dream that what we did is we took God's dream for America and perverted it into American dream that's all about things and all about being the biggest and the best and the pride that came in. And I'm proud to be an American and I sing it and I cry when I sing it, but I'm not proud to be an American because I wanna be the biggest and the best. I'm proud because I know God raised up a nation under him with his heart to spread the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ to all the nations of the earth. And I say to you right now, that is not going to be stolen. great awakening is coming to this nation and it's going to give us the transformation that we need amen by the way how many of us have 100 percent clarity on exactly everything god's going to do in the future none of us if god shows up this afternoon and takes us all home i won't be here next sunday but I believe God is opening to us the greatest opportunity to be Christians that the world has seen in our lifetime. And I am telling the Lord, Lord, I am in, and I'm going to help equip every person I can to be part of your move to see restoration and triumph over evil and see thousands of people brought into the kingdom of God. So here is just, and we're talking about prophets. I would just, I would just tell you humbly that in my opinion, this is a valid, here is one valid uh, New Testament prophet. So I submit that to you all. Uh, Andre, if you could, uh, and by the way, that's, this, that's not talking about senators and congressmen. It's talking about the, you know what needs to be the strongest institution in this country? It's not the government. It's not the military. You know what the two that need to be at the top? It's families and the church. That is what God is working to restore. The rest, we, we need it. We could use it all. We want honest businesses. We want all that. But that is not a necessity. The only thing that's a necessity is Jesus Christ in the middle, strong families, and a strong church. That's the foundation, right? I mean, if we go back to the founding fathers era, you know who the strongest component of culture was? It was the church. They were considered the fulcrum of everything that God was doing in this fledgling country. I mean, that's so far beyond where we're living right now, it's hard for us to conceive that. But, you know, we say, Lord, change us. Let us think biblically. Let us let the, your church rise up. I, I, again, I'm going to paraphrase a, 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 a prayer that I love out of Ephesians chapter 3. It says, Lord, I bow my knee before the Lord Jesus Christ that your love and your strength be glorified in the church. Because you are the God who does more than we could ask or think. That promise about doing more than we ask or think, I mean, sure, that applies to you and me personally. But the context is God wanting his church to be glorified, that it do more than we ask or think. How many of us would like to see God magnify his church beyond? You know, we think, God, I, I can see where you might do this. Well, God, what if the Lord said, I want to do this. I want to go far beyond what you can ask or think. Well, Lord, glorify yourself in the church and if prophets help us be strengthened to do that to give us the faith to do that great all these things so we want to hear from god just refer, reminding ourselves real quick how many of us want to hear from god personally more that is the hallmark that is the foundation if god uses us in the gift of prophecy for others that's great if we take encouragement from a handful of biblical solid prophets that's great but Lord, start with the beginning. Let me hear from you. And of course, as we've talked about in previous weeks, that has to be grounded in the Word. That's, that is the foundation for that. So, um, I want to wrap this up with just a few other thoughts. And this is, we're finishing up a series here on hearing God's prophetic voice. And just in the last few months, we've talked about two other 
uh, series. One is uh, about e Esther and biblical risk. And could you go back to that last phrase for a second? Just the last slide. We looked at a series on Esther, uh, biblical risk, and that God has brought each one of us for such... How many of us believe it's not a coincidence you're living right now, but God has brought each one of us for what? Such a time as right now, okay? And so we looked at that series. We also looked at a series on Ezra, the good hand of the Lord. How many of us believe the good hand of the Lord is on us? The good hand of the Lord is active in your family, in my family, in the church, uh, in the world right now. And we're finishing up this series on hearing God's prophetic voice. And we've given a verse about Ezekiel about that. Uh, next slide, please, Andre. Now, I want to just compare something about, again, we're, this series is about hearing from God's voice. And I hope everybody wants to hear from God more than ever. Okay? But I'm just making a contrast. And when we looked at the book of Esther, how many times has God mentioned in the book of Esther? None. How many prophecies are there in the book of Esther? None. It's interesting. God speaks in different times in different ways. Amen? You know, there's times if we take a look at uh, the Lord gave, the Lord gave uh, 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 Abraham a promise, and it was not fulfilled for decades. You know how many times that we, we see in Scripture that the Lord spoke to Abraham across these decades? He didn't. There's no... You know, when, jo when Joseph was in, 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 uh, in prison for years, how many, how many in Scripture, how many prophecies, how many times we see that the Lord spoke to Joseph while he was in those years in jail? There's not. Sometimes God will have seasons when he's not speaking to us, but you know what? God is there even when we don't hear his voice. Amen? You know, we cherish hearing from God's voice, he hearing from him. But even if we have seasons when he's not speaking, you know what we can do? We can rely on the fact God is with me and he is directing my steps. Amen? So uh, go to the next one, please. You know, in Ezra, there was a lot of, uh, a number of uh, frequent mention of God, but no prophecies because God does different things in different ways. Go to the next one, please. Then in this series where we were picking up on hearing the prophetic word of God, including Ezekiel, there are times... When God is just, we seem like God is just with us every moment. How many of us just feel it sometimes like, wow, it's like God is just really near me. I can just sense his presence. He's just speaking to me very often. Thank God for times like that. I love, next slide, please. I love this book because in the book of Ezekiel, remember it, the number of prophecies or even the mention of God in, in Esther was zero. Did God, let me ask you this, did God triumph in the book of Esther? Absolutely. In other words, if we feel like, God, I've been seeking you. I haven't heard you speak to me in months. You know what? God, God is going to lead us into triumph even if we have a season where we haven't heard from him. And man, no matter what, we cherish hearing God's but, voice, but no matter what happens, if we follow God, who's going to win? God will triumph. God will lead us. God will get us where we need it. We will overcome every challenge. And I want to hear from God as much as I possibly can. But even if I don't, God is with me and leading me. Can you take that to the spiritual bank, so to speak? We, when God speaks to us, we will take that encouragement and say, Lord, you said it, do it this way. This is the way, walk in it. So we're all about that. And if we're in a season where we're seeking God and he hasn't really spoken to us, and said, Lord, I'm going to move out the best I can because I know you're directing my steps and you're going to triumph in what you're doing, whether I've heard from you or not. So no matter what, we will try it. But I love this in Ezekiel. Over 240 times, God is speaking to him. The Lord spoke to me. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. How many of us love times when it seems like God is just overflowing with speaking to us? And we rejoice in that. Andre. Uh, we had, let me just summarize this word that we, we feel like God is speaking in our day. He is, gonna, he is about to move prophetically He's accelerating what he's been speaking over his body. I believe we're going to see a real transformation of things in the weeks and months to come and see God move in amazing ways that are probably beyond what we've seen in our lifetime. And so we believe that the Lord, you're speaking that. How many of us are ready to hear from God in a more abundant way? And are we prepared to be part of a historic move of the Holy Spirit? 